Look at your look at all your sports memorabilia back there. What dude, is this, dude? Listen, I'm 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 at my parents' house right now for the holidays. Still, I I go back to New York <laughs> in just a few days, and so of course they're huge Kentucky fans. So that's what you're seeing behind me. And you have no hair. What the hell happened to you? <laughs> I know. Last time since we we've chatted, I've uh, I've I've gone through some changes. Um, I don't know. Oh, I, I'm I, kidding with you. No, I wanted good. I wanted to I wanted to shave it off. My my girlfriend likes the buzz cut, and I was like, you know what? I used to do it. Um, so let's let's give it a go again. And it's definitely you. You don't know if I've showered for three days, for three weeks. You have no idea. So it's it's perfect. It's very perfect. low low maintenance. Perfect haircut. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> How's all this sound? Is this good? Mike, I, I, I rarely do interviews, so I'm like, I hopefully I set all this shit up correctly. Does it's, it sound okay? It's perfect, dude. This is this is wonderful. Okay. I uh okay. first good. first I just want to ask, how uh how are you doing, dude? It's great to it's great to chat again. I'm great. It's good seeing you. Um I'm good. Uh I think everything will be okay, but my wife and I just got a brand new puppy and I got it a Kong, put some shit in it not shit, but put food in it and then tossed it outside. And so the puppy's outside. It was good for an hour, like a couple days ago, I was on a phone call and then somehow it like snuck in through the cat door and got back inside. And it's like way too big for the cat door. So I think I'll be good, but we may have a puppy screaming in the background or he'll be fine. Listen, so that's, we'll that's perfect because here at my parents' house, I've already had a few interviews here and I have two little tiny dogs that are here and they constantly bark and, uh, you know, howl and everything. So, so don't worry, everything, anything goes here. This yeah. is, this is a real life okay. chat. This is a real life chat. So anything goes good. Yeah. yeah. This is, this is reality people. That's right. That's this right. Is, this is just getting on the fucking phone, but on the internet. No, that's right. And we're going to, we're, we're going to record anyway. it and a few, few people are going to listen as well. And I think it's good to start this, uh, first as, uh, a thank you to everyone who has listened to my podcast for these past a hundred episodes. Cause you are the hundredth guest. I wanted to have someone very, oh, wow. sp very special on, on the podcast. Yeah. You're the, you're the hundredth guest on the more than fitness podcast. No so, pressure. Yeah. Yeah, right. I know. Um, so yeah, thank you to everyone, whether you're a first time listener or if you've been here the entire time, I appreciate you. Um, and second, thank you to you, dude. Uh, I think as uh, as a as a creator for the for the work that you do as a as a mentor to me and and hopefully if I'm lucky enough to to call you as a friend as well. So yeah, thanks, man. Absolutely. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Well, I'm honored that I'm your 100th guest. That's a uh, yeah, no, that's amazing. How long have you been doing this now? Um, I think it's been a little a year and a half or so, maybe. Yeah, it, it's basically one one guest a week, one guest a week, and then I've I've gone for for quite some time. But I've I've enjoyed the shit out of of it, honestly, just because I get to. You've been remarkably consistent with it. It seems like, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that, that I I enjoy it so much, so it's easy to stay consistent. And whenever I get to use it as an excuse to just talk to people I look up to for an hour, it kind of works out, right? So, yeah, that's cool. Well, yeah. again, I'm honored to be here, and uh, yeah, whatever you want to talk about, I'm an open book, more or less. I got you. Covered. You already know that, though. I got you covered. I do. <laughs> I do. I do. Just for for context for people who maybe don't know you uh i think it's funny whenever i hear some people call you the the banksy of fitness you're just kind of the guy in the background that uh, uh yes it, uh, i keep i keep messing with my microphone i know it's a big no-no i'll stop doing that it's all good. um yeah the, the banksy of fitness uh, a former uh, a friend and a, and a client of mine a coaching client of mine uh named john said that like he just sent me an email and he was like dude i don't know what you're up to anymore but you're like the banksy of fitness so i took that uh moniker to heart but it, it, interesting i haven't even i haven't told anyone this other than a handful of people but um it's i guess we could say the banksy of fitness now but i actually um i'm wrapping up my tenure with the company that i've been at for 10 years which is called precision nutrition oh wow and ending it very very well i love the people there but I just accepted an offer to go help uh, Sam Harris and his team at Waking Up, the meditation app, to go there and help them with their marketing and their content strategy and all that kind of stuff. So no shit, it'll, it'll now be the Banksy. It'll be the Banksy of fitness and really terrible mindfulness. <laughs> I mean, Waking Up is amazing mindfulness. Just my capabilities as a <laughs> practitioner is uh, uh, what is 
subpar. Uh, man, congratulations. That's so exciting. I'm so <laughs> stoked to hear Thanks, that. Thanks, dude. Especially, you know, use the Thank app, you. whatever, uh, this morning. So it works out. That's, that's, yeah. I mean, too. And that, that's what's fun about it is that this is something it's funny when I when I started with precision nutrition, uh, which is a I mean, you know, this maybe some of the people listening or watching know it, too. But it's uh, it's now the largest uh, nutrition coaching software certification company in the world. And when I started um, it was a decade ago now, and it was just a small company, there was like, you know, a dozen people or so. And uh and what was cool is I was a personal trainer and a gym owner before I even started working with pre, uh, precision nutrition. So I used their products. Like I, I, they didn't have a certification at the time, but I read their blog posts. I bought their, the, the precision nutrition system. It was like this old binder. <laughs> yeah. And then everyone in the industry like had, you know, held PN in very high regard. And so I was really excited to take that, uh, take that job and, met some great friends, like including Dr. John Berardi, who, who was one of the co-founders of the company. And I just had great experiences there. And, uh, but then recently, you know, I've been there for a decade. I'm not getting tired of talking about nutrition or health and fitness, but I just felt like I needed kind of a new challenge. And it's funny coming into the, being a part of the waking up team is, uh, it feels very much like what precision nutrition felt like 10 years ago. It's like, I, I love, uh, Sam Harris's work. I think he's doing really good work in the world. Um, I've used the waking up app for the last couple of years, like pretty, like damn near daily. Um, my wife and I will li sit in bed and kind of listen to some of the lessons sometimes. So it's, it's, it's weird. It's like, it's very, it, it's surreal on one level, um, that I get to like work at another organization and another company with, with good people, um, who are doing important work. And, uh, yeah, it feels like a natural progression. Um, and I may be fucking jinxing all of this, by the way, because <laughs> honestly, I haven't signed the offer letter yet. I was just verbally committed. So if anyone's watching this and I turn out to not work for them, then sorry, I got too excited and I fucking uh, talked about it too quickly. <laughs> that's perfect. That's perfect. But no, I, it, there's there's different evolutions of your interests and passions. And and that's that actually kind of segues nicely because I did want to just give a little bit of uh context for for people just give your your quick little uh backstory just to kind of come towards present day to kind of give people the intro into the fitness industry and how that's progressed kind of up until now sure well and please stop me at random times if you feel like it, i'm rambling or you feel like it you know maybe there's something that like i'm not talking about that i've forgotten to talk about or something so <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, I guess the the potted biography would be. Uh, I mean, I, I started in the fitness industry because I really didn't. I can say this now. I don't know if it's true, but it felt like I didn't really have any other choice. Um, when I was in high school, I just wasn't a great student. I just didn't do. I, I couldn't sit in the classroom and and learn that way. I don't know why. And so I always kind of held this this kind of like limiting belief that maybe I was a little bit dumb, uh, but then I had all this confidence and enthusiasm in other areas of my life. And fitness was something that I really got into when I was in high school. So it's like, I wasn't able to really excel, um, in the classroom, but I could get into the gym and I could, you know, lift weights and, and, and build my body up. And it just, it, it changed a lot of things for me. And turns out that it's not that I didn't like to learn. I just wasn't interested in what I was learning at school. As soon as I started learning about health and fitness and psychology and nutrition, I was fucking hooked. I right. was, so that's all I did. I mean, a bit obsessively, we can talk about that too. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's all I did for a while. And, uh, so anyway, so after high school, I had a brief stint in community college and then I dropped out. It just wasn't for me. And I, uh, got a job as a personal train or not a personal trainer. I got a job as a fitness assistant. I was at a gym cleaning up sweat off of cardio machines. Right. And then maybe, maybe a year later I had studied hard. I got my personal training certification. And so then I just started training clients at this gym. And so I was like this, you know, late teens, early 20 year old kid. I looked the part, like I was in good shape, but I had no fucking idea what I was doing really. Like I kind of knew, right. Yeah. Like just bench presses and uh, <laughs> yeah. everything. And, uh, anyway, so that, that became part of a career arc for a little while. 
um, where I was at the gym and then I went and I opened my own spot about a year later. I took a loan out from one of my clients. And so that shows you just kind of the, like how, um, personal that business can be. And it you know, can be helpful. Young kid I got my, I got my LLC, oh, incredibly LLC helpful. through LLC through uh, a lawyer client of mine actually. So yeah. Continue. Okay. See, exactly. <laughs> and, and, and people like, I don't know, people always like to pay it forward and help out the, you know, the next person or so I had, I had a lot of great clients who did pretty well for themselves, who, um, became like great friends during that time and really supported me, not just, you know, paying me for my services, but just, uh, sharing wisdom. Uh, some of the best conversations I've had were, like after a training session, sometimes during a training session, which then made me feel bad as a personal trainer because I wasn't actually doing my job. Yeah. But uh, so anyway, so I was in the fitness industry. So I, I was training clients for a long time. I opened up my own place. And then, uh, but kind of simultaneously, I'd always kind of had this love for writing too. And um, when I was, uh, oh man, I used to write like shitty poetry to girls and thought it was really good. And, uh, but anyway, I was, um, kind of in the middle of my personal training career and I was at a coffee shop and I sent an email to Lou Schuler. and Lou Schuler is the uh, former fitness director of men's health magazine. Great guy. And he had a website. This was back in like 2005, maybe. Right. right. Um, and so he emailed me back. I basically just asked him like, I want to be a fitness writer. What do I do? And he was like, you should go to Columbia journalism school. And I'm like, Oh, Lou, I graduated with a 1.7 GPA, man. I ain't getting into Columbia or anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But anyway, so he kind of became my first mentor, kind of like how my clients have become mentors to me in some way, uh, which I was very fortunate to have. Lou kind of became one of my very first mentors in the fitness and writing space. And he was like, you should just start a blog, like write about your experience, write about what you're doing. And so 2006, uh, I started a blog and my friend Jason, a really great friend of mine, we grew up together. He was just learning how to get into web design. And so I was like, well, you build my website for free because I don't have any fucking money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because even though I was a personal trainer and everything like that, like my mom would still bring me care packages of like food and toilet paper <laughs> because like, I yes. was like, oh, dude, I mean, I, I was doing okay for a while. But when I, when I got in, this is a tangent, sorry. But when okay. I got into my own uh, gym, like I uh, was an idiot and I had a, a, a big ego in some ways. And so I like got like the nicest spot I could rent <laughs> that had a crazy high rent. And then I like got like $25,000 worth of equipment that I did not need. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I just got myself in deep and I'm like, holy shit, I was making way more money as a personal trainer over here. Yeah. So anyway, I got a, I got a very good education pretty early on about like, um, business capital and uh and and, and uh, <laughs> overhead and the, where you don't want to be the hard way yeah <laughs> that's funny oh god man yeah 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 okay um but anyway so, uh, that's the tangent and no so, it's all good um, it's all good yeah so my mom was bringing me care packages of food and everything but um i don't remember exactly where i was going but we'll go back to lou but so lou was helping me uh kind of become a writer i started a blog that's it that's it and my yes. friend jason my friend Jason uh, built it, me my first website for free. And then I started introducing him to some of my clients who needed websites for their business. And then that turned eventually, Jason and I kind of grew our careers uh, together yeah. because I would start introducing him to some of my fitness friends. So then he became the guy, flash forward. I mean, right. he's doing way different things now, but for a period of time there, he was like the guy for fitness websites. Like right. fucking everyone had their website done by Jason. Yeah. Um, so what was cool about that though, is that like having a website, like I was suddenly kind of, um, I mean, I don't think it's too ridiculous to say this, but I was kind of at the forefront of like fitness or lifestyle kind of blogging. Like I just, I, I don't know. Like I just, I didn't know a lot of people would blog. I didn't know anyone in my school that had a blog yeah. or anyone at, at, you know, in my town. Right. I mean, I'm sure some people did. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I started writing um, on a blog and then I got a job at uh, Testosterone Nation, T Nation yeah. um, as an assistant editor. Um, what year, which how is old, another place. How old were you whenever you oh, yeah. got that job? Man. So that was in 2008, 23, 23. Okay. I like giving timelines because a, 
the people that listen to this. Yeah. I like going through the inflection points of different things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So 2008, so, uh, email Lou Schuler in 2005, I already had a personal training business then. And then it was like 2006, 2007, Lou helped me get into some magazines. So I got into men's health and men's fitness and I started kind of trying to work my way up that way. How'd you feel? How'd, a job. You, how'd you feel about that? How'd you feel about the, sorry to cut you off. I do that sometimes, but with, no, you're with, with, the men's, with the men's health and with those accolades, cause that's kind of what the, what I'm, what I'm getting at here. Whenever you were 23, 24 and you started to, to get into these magazines and things. Um, yeah. How did that, how did that, and you can get into your, your other successes around that time as well. Cause I think that that's, that's really what I wanted to hone in on is because you did have yeah. quite a bit of success early on. And then just the way that you felt about it, I think was interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's stick on that for a minute then. And this is good that you brought me back there. Um, I got you. Cause you know, your audience way better than I will. <laughs> uh, so thanks for wrangling me. Yeah. So it felt fucking awesome, dude. Were you kidding me? Like, I was like 23 and I could walk into a, into my Safeway, a grocery store and pick up three magazines on the shelf and then like flip it open to a random page and then see my name and a thing I did or my photo. Right. It was awesome. Of course. And, and I'm ashamed to admit that I totally took girls into the grocery store to <laughs> buy them a magazine <laughs> to show them yes. my name. <laughs> yes. it was terrible. Hey, hey, check, check that magazine right there. You go to page. Who's uh, that guy? 28. Was that? Yeah. Is it? Oh, that's me. That's weird. That's great. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah, dude, totally, totally that kind of uh, douchebag. Um, but, and I say that in a nice way. I mean, we are who we are. And uh, I was really proud of myself, especially having like not, I had a big chip on my shoulder at that time too. Like as not, not doing well in school, not going to college. I was like, I mean, I am not this aggressive, but I, it was like, I was flipping everyone <laughs> off being like, yeah, fuck you. Like this is, I, I can, can still make it. Right. And so it was a huge, it was, it was a very important time in my life because it's like I got handed, not handed. I mean, it was hard work, but it was all, it's all luck too, right? Like a, a lot of it's luck. And so I just, I was in this opportunity where I was starting to write for magazines. I got a book deal at this time, Lou Schuler, um, And I, we wrote a book together. He was my uncredited co-author on built for show that was released in 2008. And um, so I, I found myself in this really cool, weird position, which is I was like 23 and I had my own gym, which was, as we said earlier, doing okay. I was breaking even, <laughs> right. and, but my mom was bringing me food. Um, but I had just accepted a job at T Nation uh, as an assistant editor. And I, uh, they asked me in the interview how much money I was making with my personal training business. And I totally lied. I, I turned out to... <laughs> no lying anymore. Not even white lies. I'm, I'm on the whole, uh, radical honesty kind yeah, of kick. Yeah. Uh, I think it's really important, but totally fucking lied to them about <laughs> how much money I made. So they, I got suddenly got paid like four times more than I ever gotten paid before in a year. That's amazing. Um, so you have, and the, then I had these have, magazines. Yeah. You have the money, you have then, the notoriety and then a book. Right. Yeah. And, and when we say money, I'm not like, dude, yeah. I'm not fucking rich. I'm, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to I'm like Montana. I'm like Montana rich. I'm like 23 year old. Like, like out of all my circle of friends, I'm doing the best, but I don't, it's not real money. I understand. Um, right. Anyway, I said to make that caveat. <laughs> um, and then I have a, yeah, I have a book that's in stores. Um, that's crazy. I have this small audience of people that I've built um, from my blog and, and from T nation. They would, you know, link to my website. People would read my blog, sign up for my newsletter list. Um, and I was trying to make new connections with people. I already had great people in the fitness industry I was talking to. And then I met, uh, Tim Ferriss and then I helped Tim out with research for the four hour body. So anyway, I am just, I'm going through all this random shit, but it was a really crazy time in my life. Like 23, 24 years old was like insane and in the best way possible. Um, yeah. and then, and then, and then you realize though, that like all of it's cool as shit. But I'm so glad that I kind of had this kind of, you know, early success when I was young because I'm like, oh, everything's awesome. But like my life didn't change that much. Like I'm still kind of the same person, right? Like I, everyone says like, I'll, I'll know when I make it. 
like I have this goal of like writing a book or writing for a magazine or starting a business or whatever. And I, and I, I, car- I started checking off some of my boxes and I, not that I got to the end of the list, but I just started checking them off and I'm like, okay, there's something more than this though. And I, then I would see other people because I was, I was pretty well connected at that time. I just, I love, I was very, am very gregarious and I love talking to people and meeting new people and asking them questions. So I had this big network of people and I was kind of watching other people that were way more successful than me in terms of money and status and fame or whatever. And I mean, nothing personal against any of these people, but like they didn't seem that happy either. A lot of them were miserable, making poor decisions. And I'm like, okay, well, that level of fame, like my book sold okay, but like it wasn't a fucking bestseller by sure. far. But apparently becoming a bestseller doesn't really change anything either. Like you are who you are at the end of the day. And then you have to, I don't know, it was around probably like 27, 28. And I'd already joined Precision Nutrition at this time where I just felt like, okay, um, I kind of need to go a little bit more intra. I got to go be more introspective, I mm, think. Before so. before, before we get to that, because I do want to get to that, I liked how in another interview you talked about like blast versus dust mode. And for the first, uh, I think you said like 15 years of your career, it was very uh, uh, blast, right? So you wanted to, and, and yeah. you had this chip on your shoulder. You wanted to prove something to everybody. What I'm curious about is like, do you think that that like, pressure and desire to make something of yourself is required to to have that much success early on or or do you think that you could have gone about it in a different way and and kind of avoided that never satisfied mentality yeah i, I mean i really don't know um it seemed necessary to me maybe it's not for for someone else but i don't know i I've, like the only thing I can compare it to is like, because I can't compare it to anyone else's experience because I don't know their experience, but I can compare it to me now. And I do, I, a part of me does think that a little bit of of, of obsession was required in a way. Um, like it almost, I'm not saying it ever has to get to an unhealthy level, but people can be addicted to, you know, drugs, right. work emotions, right. thoughts, whatever. And so on one level, it was like, yeah, it's like a kind of a, a mild addiction. Like I got super into business and 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 thinking through it and then fitness and, and combining these two that, uh, yeah, it's like, I, this sounds weird, but like I'm having more fun now in my mid thirties than I ever did in my twenties. I was like, I was just, I was so focused in my twenties on making it or status and not even, not even in a negative way, but I'm talking about like, I always got to be better than the day before, uh, growth mindset, proving it to your, proving, proving, proving everything. it to yourself, proving it to yourself. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and I think, and, and you, I still find myself there sometimes, but there's just been a really, there's been more of a relaxing into things more recently. Okay. And, uh, yeah, but I, so I don't know if I could now I can be more relaxed and right. go after these ambitious things and try to do this good work. But I don't know if I could have done it when I was young. I felt like I probably needed that chip on my shoulder to get I me. I just here. I want to know why you didn't see because here's the thing: what you said was interesting. How you saw these other very successful people with you know the book deal and all the you know or with the bestsellers and all these things that still weren't happy. Why did you? Why did you choose to go the more internal meditation route instead of going like more money, more power, more fame, more notoriety? Was there like a, a, a certain event that happened? Was it a, a series of events? What made you go from, okay, more fame and more yeah. money is not the answer. I need to work internally. A couple of things. Um, I mean, at that point, this is all, I mean, this is all subjective, right? This is like... But at that point, I'm going to say I'm 28, I don't know, 20, 28, 29, when, the, when this really kind of starts to kick in. Um, and I'm like, what else is there? Like, what's next? Like, I have, I have like, my relationship's good. I mean, it, at the time it was good. And we since broke up and I started dating someone else, got married, all that. Um, but like, I was in a good relationship at the time. Um, I was in good physical shape and health. I kind of had like, 
uh, in my eyes and in the eyes of some people in the fitness industry kind of like made it to the top of my career. Like I worked for a, a great company doing good work in the world. I had kind of been there and done that with like the open, the gym, decided not to do that, the writing. And so part of it, I mean, maybe naively, but part of it was almost kind of like, felt like kind of the end of the road. Like, what the fuck do I do now? Do I really want to go write another book? Maybe. But I saw that this last book didn't change anything, really. I mean, maybe this one would take off and be a success. Maybe maybe I would have fun writing it. And I think that there's something to that. But at the time, I just, it's like I just kind of ran out of steam. It's like, well, what's the point? And right around that time, uh, I had a, a good friend, childhood friend, like from age, when I say childhood, like high school friend from like sure. age, like 15 to 27, like good friend, talk to him pretty much every other day or so. And, uh, but he was uh, hit by a car while walking to work. And so he died and that kind of just reset me a little bit too. Cause then I'm like, all of a sudden I'm kind of like feeling, eh, I'm kind of at the top over here. I don't really know what I want to do next. And then my friend dies and I'm like, God, I could die at any moment. Like yeah. I've just been hustling and doing all this stuff for so long. And I mean, I was kind of fidgety and I, I, I you know what I mean? It's like I had, I had some like, uh, I mean, I would have never known this at the time, but I just, I didn't know how to calm down. I didn't really know how to have fun in a way that's truly, I didn't know how to like let myself go. And I don't mean that in any weird way, but just like, I couldn't just be a person living a life in the world. Like I had to become somebody. And I think it was right around that time where I actually, I did a Sam Harris's uh, looking for the self meditation. Um, it's a 26 minute guided meditation. You can find it online. Um, see how I'm working in a plug in here for my hey. new company. Didn't even mean to do it. <laughs> Good start um, already. Good start already. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, I did this, this looking for the self meditation and it's something just kind of changed in my experience. And, and then with my friend dying and everything kind of just came together where I started meditating more and I'm like, man, I just. I've been so uptight. I just need to relax a little bit more. There's, it, it kind of was the chip in the armor, I guess, uh, to use that stupid metaphor, but it's like something kind of broke open at that point. And it's like, then I went through this period and I'm still on this of unlearning a lot of habits and unlearning what I thought I knew about myself and who I was and what my work was in the world. And, uh, and that was scary as shit because it was, it was totally different. It was like, I, like I couldn't define myself as like a, a certain kind of person anymore, like an ambitious person or a, a successful person. Like, yeah, I mean, there's a couple of right. years and, and there's never depression there, never depression or anything like that, but just more of like a, just like a, a why, like, what is all of this? Um, do you, do you anyway. think, do you, uh, thank you for, for sharing all that, dude. Um, do you think because here's something that I think about. Do you think you would have been able to have that uh, kind of like awakening or whatever you want to call it, right? Like, do you think you would have been able to relax a little bit if you wouldn't have already had some of that success and notoriety and, and, and accolades and, and gotten kind of that? Because you, you got to the point where where you're just like, okay, what's next? And then also this next thing happened. And then it just, it was kind of a pivotal moment for you to kind of transition and focus on new things. So what I'm wondering is, would do you think that that would be the same if you hadn't already done a lot of the things that you had set out to do from the beginning? That's a good question. Um, like all good questions, the answer is I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Or it depends. Or it depends. Um, yeah. But I can. But I'll I'll try to speak to it a little bit though. Um, I think it's just what I had to go through. Like, I don't know where everyone else's bar is in their heads about what they need to do in order to feel okay in the world, like to be truly at peace and at rest with just living a life. And obviously there's, there are things we got to do. I'm not just talking about being a couch potato or like a weird fucking hippie that just like sits inside all day and smokes pot, right. even though that's fine too. <laughs> sure. and totally times for that too. But yeah. like, I don't know. Like I just had like a, Apparently my threshold for success, personally, like all self inflicted 
um, or you know, a product of conditioning that I had nothing to do with. Sure. Um, I don't know. Apparently, it was a high bar, and um, I don't know if other people have. And, and there's no. And, the, and this is the thing too. This this it doesn't mean there's no value judgment on having a high bar versus having a low bar. In fact, maybe having a low bar is better in some way because you're more, maybe you're more consistently happy because <laughs> yeah. you have lower expectations for everything. Yeah. I mean, that's possible. That, that's, and so, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Kayo. That's, that's kind of what I'm getting at here. And, and what I mentioned in my email is that I'm in this weird, to give context, I'm in this weird place where there's still things that I'm, looking to accomplish, right? And I have that kind of a little bit of chip on my shoulder to make a name for myself, to to do really good work and 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 put something really good out there. Um but then also on the other side I have the other chip uh, the other person on my shoulder saying like to 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 relax, to to be content with how things are going because things are going good. Like don't get me wrong, like I'm not I'm doing fine. I can pay rent. I I can get food. I, everything is okay, but I'm trying to balance that that hustle and ambitious mindset with, hey, also while while you're on that journey, let's fucking chill a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to balance those, and and, and I'm looking for you for advice. <laughs> okay, well there, set it up right. <laughs> Actually, because I got your email and uh, I'm a good podcast guest, I read the email and then I thought about some things I should say. Okay, great. Um, great. I don't remember most of what those were, but I, uh, I wrote it down. No. And I wrote down something right here and I said, there's a time or a season for everything. Mm. And, um, and then because I'm also, I have a little book here with the little thing. This is the Tao Te Ching. Oh and, yes. Uh, yeah. This is, to- this is, this is the, this is like story hour now, but I, I thought I read your email. I thought of a time or season for everything. And then that keyed me in. I remembered a passage from the Tao Te Ching that I was like, oh, I got to find that. So I flipped through it really quickly. So it's it's very quick. I'll read it to you. Please do. Um, and, the, and, and the Tao Te Ching is a, uh, I, I think it's an ancient Chinese text written by uh, Lao Tzu. He may or may not have actually existed. Um, I don't know at what time period, but a long time ago, yeah. um, he was a really smart dude. So anyway, um, it says there's a time for being ahead, a time for being behind a time for being in motion, a time for being at rest, a time for being vigorous, a time for being exhausted, a time for being in safe, a time for being in danger. And I don't know if I, I, like to me, I don't know if I could have felt this at ease and, and, you know, at ease for me. Sure. It's all on a continuum. There, there are other people who are way more relaxed than me and guarantee that. Um, But I don't know if it could have been any different. And I don't know if it can be like, like, I don't know, like you seem to be someone just from interacting with you. And, and knowing quite a bit about your business and everything, like you also seem to have a high bar for yourself. And so I don't know, it's interesting. It's like, you could kind of come at the question from a couple of different angles, but like one question may be like, what do I feel like I have to accomplish in order to have made it or in order to yeah. reach my goals or in order to be successful and, and kind of define that. And, and that's interesting because then it's a, that's very thought oriented. That's very, um, strategy and planning and, and, and thinking, uh, and like trying to like, like, what do I want to be? Like, it's like goal setting almost in a way. And there's value to that. And, but that's the only one way of coming at the, uh, coming at that. I think another question that you could kind of ask yourself at the same time is, um, is this good enough or how much else do I need? Um, it's like, it, it's, it's more of like a, a what's important in life kind of thing. And so I don't know if you need to, maybe sometimes like the, the, the time for being at rest, a time for being vigorous is what yeah. I said, which yeah. is awesome. Yeah. Good word. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe right now you feel like you do have something to prove to yourself or to, to other people or whatever. And then that may change tomorrow or it may change in five years or it may never change. Like, I don't, you know, it's kind of your, kind of your makeup of who you are. And so, right, right. I think, um, to, to make sure that this isn't just a therapy session for me, I, but I do think that other people <laughs> are going to have similar, uh, you know, uh, interests in topics like this too. But, 
I, in 2020 for me was very much a, a year of, of uh, kind of thinking and deep reflection and figuring out what, where the hell do I want to go next? Like, what do I want to do next? Yeah. Right. And, uh, so there wasn't tons of like action taking, there was lots of thinking. And so if you want to count that as like action taking, then sure. But I think what was happening is I needed to figure out which direction I wanted to go so that I could then take the a hundred percent of my efforts in that direction. Right. And so 2021 for me is like the year of intentional action. That's what I called it in my retrospective, which I actually just published today, by the way. Um, but but yeah, so 20, Right. 2021 is the year of intentional action for me. And I feel like I've had this anxiety. I've had these issues with uh, self-worth to be you know, vulnerable for a second um, because whenever I was thinking I wasn't doing, I wasn't putting out tons of work out into the world. I wasn't selling as much. I wasn't you know, making as much money, et cetera, et cetera, like all these different things. And I think for me, um, uh, that kind of played mind games with me for a little bit, even though I know it's a necessity. And so what I've already realized in the beginning of 2021 is that the more that I take action and the more uh, promises that I keep to myself on a regular basis, that's been the biggest thing as far as my self-worth and confidence and how good I feel at the end of the night, like that has played a huge part in it. So I'm, I'm, I'm working that way, but yeah, I definitely just wanted to touch on it with you for a little bit and just hear your thoughts. Cause I do appreciate your worldview on this stuff uh, as well. Yeah. I mean, it'll be interesting to, I mean, either two things are going to happen. You're going to get what you want and then realize that it's not what you really wanted or you're not going to get what you want and it's not going to matter. Yeah, right. I know. I know it is. Or you're not going to get what you, or, or where most people, they don't get what they want or they, they have, we we want to get to a certain place, but we're never quite there. And it's like, I mean, that whole, the, the, the trope, uh, the cliche is, uh, um, Oh, motherfucker. I just forgot the cliche I was going to say. <laughs> it's all good. It's Never all good. mind. It's all good. Wow. It's fine. It's totally fine. It's totally fine. We can, <laughs> we can, we can, we can segue. I want it. <laughs> That's so funny. That's so funny. It's my, uh, uh, I, was off, I was lost in my own, uh, thinking of words like trope and cliche where I actually forgot my fucking point. You should just pick up the book again and then we can <laughs> oh, just start keeping it. I remembered it. it. There it is. I was waiting I for it to come it. back around. Go ahead. The fucking trope and the cliche is that the uh, it's the journey, not the destination. Like the <laughs> right. journey has to matter more. Right. Yeah. Thank you. But God. how? But that. But, but it's how do we fucking enjoy the journey? How do you how do you enjoy that journey while also not succumbing to the chip on your shoulder and trying really fucking hard and like really, you know, um, I don't not not saying beating yourself up, but holding your uh, holding yourself to that standard. I'm trying to hold myself to a certain standard without berating myself too much in the process, if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is good. It's just I'm trying to think about how to how to answer this. And it's like, There's a way to answer this, which is kind of like the raw, raw, you just got to push yourself or there's a way to answer it. That's also kind of like the, just take it easy. And I don't know if either of those are right. It's a, it's a mixture of both, man. Like it's like, I would be more interested in figuring out why I had that chip on my shoulder and why, and it doesn't mean that you stop working while doing this stuff. Like I'm, I mean, you know, I talked about me relaxing more and and not being as driven and ambitious. I mean, shit, I just, I'm getting a new job and I'm very excited about it. And this is actually the first time in a couple of years where I've really felt called to be super creative and I'm just excited to work again. And I couldn't have predicted that. And I couldn't predict that, like, I was going to, you know, reach a certain level and then kind of peter out from there. And and so it's just been more interesting to watch. It's more interesting to watch my mind states now. And like when I get excited about something or when I feel like I'm not being or doing enough because it's, I don't know, it's interesting. It's like, I mean, not to get too, you know, woo woo on you either, but like, I don't know, those are just feelings and emotions and thoughts and they're not necessarily, they're part of reality, but they're not the whole fucking story. And so it's like more and more, um, more and more I'm realizing that I don't have to, that I'm not identical to my thoughts or my feelings or my emotions. And, um, it's, it's, it's super, 
liberating, but they don't go away. They're still there. It's just, it's, it's just a different kind of relationship to them. And so when I still, I still feel like, I'll tell you this for sure. I still feel nervous and apprehensive. Like I'm not doing enough sometimes, but before that used to be a signal that something was a problem or that something was wrong and I needed to fix it. And now I hear that and I just don't really believe it. And I don't know, it's just a lot, it's a lot easier and way less stressful to, to move in that way. And that's what I'm, that's what I've been learning to do more and more over the last few years is just to do good work and to, and to work my ass off and everything, but just to, I guess, just not be so caught up in it. Um, as much mm, you're, you, you're caught up in it right now. I know. And, and it's not a, and it's not a bad thing because I may be caught up in something else and I probably <laughs> am now and definitely in the future and definitely in the past, but if there's a season and a time for everything. So do what right. you, do what you feel like you got to do right now, I guess. <laughs> Appreciate the help. <laughs> Just be yeah. you. Yeah, I got it. No. <laughs> How's that for advice? <laughs> Just go fucking do what you're going to do anyway, dude. Oh, <laughs> uh. Oh, advice from Nate Green. I love it. It's so perfect. Um, no, that's great. That no, it really is. It, it really is helpful to to hear that. And and um, what are so what are some things in 2021? Uh, going back to things that you're looking forward to as far as uh, goals and, and things with the company. It's just like, do you, ha, did you set intentions for this year, or are you still kind of just like taking things day by day, moment by moment? I still plan. Um... I mean, in terms of what my goals are for like for the new gig and and waking up in general, like I have no idea. I've not. I literally accepted the offer this week, which is what I'm saying. Like it still may fall did, through. Did you? I hope it did, doesn't. Did you shit your pants when you when you found out like that you could be working with with Sam and them? Were you like super nervous and also excited? I was a bit nervous talking to him the first time, but I mean, I get I got a little nervous for this podcast to talk to you, man. I talked <laughs> to you dozens of times, so fucking, right. I don't know. I think, it's, I think it's just a human thing. Me and Sam are similar, you know. <laughs> We're pretty close. Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> that, there's that too. And I think it's just a human emotion, right? Feel a little nervous before you got to talk to someone. Um, of course. Uh, no, I was, yeah, no, I'm really stoked. But um, I don't know, it's kind of followed, it's just followed a trajectory that, I mean, maybe, I don't know if it's unique, but like, it's the only way I know how to do things. Like I just, I reached out to him through, I just sent him a cold email and I basically just said, Hey, like, I want to help. Um, here's what I think I can do to help. And don't worry. I'm like fully employed. I'm not even asking for money. So I just, I sent an email out and, uh, had a good conversation with his business partner. Um, and yeah, man, just worked with them over a course of a couple of months on some small little projects. And, uh, and then, yeah, when they finally made an offer, I was excited and, and it, I knew, I mean, it, I knew it was kind of coming. I was hoping it was coming just based on previous conversations and stuff, but I don't know. It feels very, it feels, I'm, I'm very excited and I'm very grateful. Um, and it feels kind of natural at the same time. It's like, no, this is just where I'm at in my life right now. This just seems like the next thing to do. Yeah, you that know? makes that makes sense. That makes sense, and I am I am super stoked to you and excited to to keep up with that um, as well. But as far as maybe maybe more personal goals, or it could also be work related yeah. goals, things like that. What do do you have anything in mind for twenty twenty one? Yeah. Um, yes and no. Like I said, I got this puppy who may currently be like eating like a tree out there. He, <laughs> yeah. like, he literally puts anything in his mouth. Right. It's insane. Right. Um, so that's teaching me patience because we got a puppy and it's also, it's interesting too. It's also teaching me, it's teaching me patience and, and like a dog, um, as far as I, as far as I've read, um, a dog can kind of pick up on your emotional energy even more so than the commands you're giving it. Right. And so it's really an opportunity for me to kind of be at rest and kind of be calmer, just interacting throughout the day, especially with the dog, because it's going to pick up on that. And I don't want to have a nervous fucking dog. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm not saying there's never going to be a point again where I sit down and I think about the last year and then I write down my intentions and all of that. But, um, I don't know. 
I, the same kind of stuff that I need to work on seems to keep coming up over and over again. And I think it may always be like that. There's just some stuff in my life, like just old habit patterns and thoughts and, and ways of being like, I, I realize how tight I am all the time. Like maybe yeah. it was all the weight training without doing yoga, but like, even while writing, I'm like writing on pen and paper and I'm like, why, why am I fucking writing like this? I'm writing <laughs> like, I'm like crushing the pen in my hand. Yeah. And so I don't know. It's more this year is kind of just, uh, I don't know. It's a day by day thing, but it's more just body awareness and awareness of my own thoughts, like what's happening and right. how I am interacting with people. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I, that's my, I that's my it. goal, I guess. No, I, I like it. Dude. No, I'm, I'm, I'm all about it. I, 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 I know that you've been, you've been working with, with Locke Kelly some with the meditation things. Uh, and I think that what I, I know that we've got to, I want to wrap this up because I selfishly want to just chat with you. I know you've got a hard stop in, in, you know, about 15 minutes or so. Um, but I, <laughs> yeah, I do want to know, it. like if with people, people hearing all of this, uh, and then having your background with meditation and, and just having a more embodied experience, like if somebody wants to like everything that they've heard you say, they're like, Hey, I want to get a little bit more like that. I want to have a more calmer experience. I don't want to grip the shit out of my pen whenever I'm writing. It's like, what kind of, what kind of action step, like what, what should they do next or what should they start with at least? Well, the obvious thing I'm about to say is they should download Waking Up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm so sorry for everyone listening. Matt truly really didn't know this was coming. And, coupon coupon but, code Nate. The, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, no the, the, that doesn't exist. I don't think. Um, I, I know it doesn't exist. Um, uh, that's great. But no, seriously, though, I use I used it for years before I even thought about like trying to work with them on any way. Right. But Waking Up is great. It's it's a, it's a, it's a great meditation philosophy wise companion it's like a wise companion in your pocket and it's got good lessons and everything the but, lessons right, but, are so phenomenal than, sorry Go right ahead. yeah they're so, great though no so other than that i just think it's and uh another cool thing i love about the company though and i know it sounds like a pitch but like the app is like a 100 bucks a year but if you can't afford it you literally just send an email to the team and you get a free account yeah. like it's free literally for anyone that actually needs it um which is cool so anyway aside from that plug um <laughs> i would just encourage them i mean if you're listening to this and you want to slow down a little bit there's a ton of free meditation stuff out there but just sit and take a couple of deep breaths right now and feel the air moving through your body feel your butt on the chair or your arms and legs moving through space if you're walking and just kind of come into right here and right now. I mean, this is where, this is where your life is happening is right now. It's not happening in the future. It's not happening in the past. Those are just thoughts and they're thoughts that are coming up now. And so I just think more and more, there are these, there are these little gateways that, um, people may find it through, um, movement through sitting down and actually learning how to meditate. But I mean, ultimately it's just, coming into coming into what it feels like to be you um in this moment i think is this the most important thing that we could ever work on um, yeah. it's like the awareness of what's happening now is like the ultimate meta skill and uh just to just to know that you're alive and breathing and you don't know how you got here or where it's all going um it's i don't know it's it's fucking crazy and it's a mystery and it's super cool to be in touch with yeah. Two things that I remember you, and we can wrap it up with this, two things I heard you say on other podcasts. Uh, the first one was how you've been um, working out without any music or podcasts. Uh, and I think that that can be yep. a very meditative experience in itself of how amazing the body is whenever you're stretching and shortening muscles under load. Right. Uh, so, yeah. so yeah. Have you still been Absolutely. doing that and enjoying that? Occasionally. So I would say I'd probably have 50, 50, 50% 50 of the time I'm listening to an audio book or some music, but then the other 50% of the time I am just kind of being there, no headphones and no music in the room. And yeah, just like, what does it feel like to, if you're doing a push up? what does it feel like to put your hand, like, what does the carpet or the floor feel like under your hands? What is it? What's the actual felt sense of like lowering yourself? And then like, what's the tension that happens when you push up? Like it's, all, bodybuilders used to talk about this all the time, the whole mind muscle connection, but like without, right. without music, 
without music or anything other kind of distraction, like you can really kind of get into it. I mean, this is what, this is really what yoga is. At least I, I think mm -hmm. right? people yeah. practice yoga. It's very, it's very intentional movement with breathing. Um, so yeah, I still do that and it's been super helpful. And it's yeah. also interesting with, uh, conditioning exercises like jumping rope or on the rowing machine or a bike, um, to, I mean, cause in that moment, you can do some push-ups and like you may go to failure or close to it and it kind of sucks, but like usually lifting weights or doing body weight stuff isn't too taxing. Like you can kind of get through it. Right. But when you're like on a rowing machine doing a 2000 meter row, breathing only through your nose, like there's a, some times in there when you're suffering and it's really a beautiful thing to not run away from the suffering and to just kind of inquire like what is suffering and who is suffering? That's fucking interesting to ask yourself those questions in that moment, those moments when your heart's beating really fast and your breath's going and you, uh, you just feel very uncomfortable. I just like to ask who's suffering right now because sensations are happening, things are happening, but the, the word suffering is a word and, uh, I'm doing something good for my body and I don't know, it's, just, it, it, it's super interesting. Oh yeah. It's, that's very weird to think about actually. Uh, it's, it's kind of, well, don't even think about it. Just go do it. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> go, uh, everyone listening, go do some kind of cardiovascular activity. That's intense. Not like don't, you know, do sprints until you like you pass out, but like right. go do something that's hard for like 10 minutes or more and don't listen to any music or anything and, and don't, and try to always come back to, the feeling of your hands or the breath or your sweat going down your forehead, just come back to the raw experience of what it's like to, to do this movement or this exercise. And, uh, it's interesting. It's yeah. super interesting to see That's what it. happens. That's beautiful, man. I love it. I'm definitely, I'm going to, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to the gym after this and get put in some fucking work. Um, <laughs> there you go. But, uh, cool. All right, Nate, <laughs> thank you so much for doing this dude. Where, uh, where, where can people, where can people find out more about you? Yeah. So my blog is nategreen.org and I have a Twitter account that I never post on and that's the Nate Green, which is uh, kind of self-serving, but made me feel special when I got that handle a long time ago. <laughs> and the blue check mark. Don't forget that. And the blue, and the, I got the blue check mark too, which uh, is, is cool, but is only really good for meeting people. Um, that's true. It doesn't really change anything. That's yeah. true. Well, um, and they should go to waking up dot com man listen if you don't show this to sam or, or somebody on his team like listen this guy it, it, i i did a full plug for you on this podcast yeah didn't even mean to i'm just that stoked about it i, I would have plugged that shit if I, I i i'm not even getting paid for it right now <laughs> right right yeah you haven't even gotten a paycheck yet you haven't even signed the paper no. yet uh, i haven't done anything again may not be part of the team we'll see Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Nate, thank you so much for doing this, man. Hopefully uh, we can do it again soon. Okay. Yeah, man. Thank you.